Hi, this is Regina Y. Favors with Pre-Singles Counseling. This is part of my Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum where I design lessons and case studies based in the psychology literature on different topics. This Pre-Singles Counseling is targeted to three types of individuals. The first individual is a single, is a person who is interested in becoming single. That, per, that means that person is not necessarily interested in dating or entering the marriage market. The second individual is a single individual who is interested in entering the dating market. And then the last individual is a single dating individual who is interested in marriage. So take some time to listen to this lesson and our case study. Please leave a comment uh, and I will reply. In addition, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell if you are interested in further topics. This is Pre-Singles Counseling, a Pre-Singles Counseling Coaching Curriculum. Thank you for visiting the channel. This lesson is subject to fair use where I will comment, criticize, um, offer research as well as teach and provide scholarship. Single women should be knowledgeable about what it means to be single and how to navigate their singleness regardless of, of a decision to date or marry. This means that single women should take the necessary time to learn about their singleness, set academic, professional, and personal goals, and contemplate whether they are ready to enter the dating market. Single women should never enter the dating market without a goal and a plan. Therefore, one of the most important aspects of being a single woman is that you can plan your transition, establish a time schedule, set mating preferences, and learn about how men and women date. Pre-singles counseling is based in a decision to enter or exit singleness. Pre-singles is the time period between single and contemplation of dating. There is a difference between being a single individual and being a sin single individual who has entered the dating market, which includes the sex market. Pre-singles counseling reflects the processes by which an individual researches, learns, and plans to navigate life either as a single, a dating single, or a single interested in marriage. So pre-singles defined, pre-singles counseling is defined as the research processes and planning for entering a state of singlehood. The main target audience is 18 to 45 years of age, man and woman. However, middle school to high school students are considered. Processes include single to single. So that is that transitional time prior to entering the dating market at any age. Single to dating single that transitional time prior to considering marriage, and then single dating to marriage, that transitional time prior to and after premarital counseling. Pre-singles counseling is the immediate strategy of adopting life plans to manage the self as a responsible individual adult, adult up to and including a major life change. So here are some pre-lecture discussion questions. So are you single? This question means single without separation or dating rotation or on, on again, off again, boyfriend or any other romantic relationship, including rebounding and dating. Why are you single? Are you enduring a recent separation from a romantic partner? Do you plan to remain single? What are your plans to change from single to a member of a romantic couple or marriage? Do you have a financial plan as a single woman? And you will see throughout this lecture, this orientation course, um, that I focus most, if not all of the topics on having a financial plan. We oftentimes make uh, unsound decisions based upon um, 
the fact that we don't have enough money or we are looking for money or we are looking for someone to cover us and we are not covering ourselves financially. So keep that in mind. You will, you will see throughout this orientation multiple references to financial planning. Pre-discussion, so what is your SWAT? So I'm using um, SWAT that you would normally see in business um, as a way to um, get you to engage your own personal SWAT. So what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? What are your threats? So after each section, I will ask you what your SWAT is. So trust. Protecting your legacy. What is a trust? A trust is a fiduciary arrangement uh, that allows a trustee, the third party, to hold assets on behalf of a beneficiary. And we always think about trust in terms of rich people, but you still have beneficiaries. Uh, trusts typically avoid probate, which allows the beneficiaries to gain access to assets quickly than if those assets were transferred through the wheel. When there is an irrevocable trust, which may not be part of the taxable estate, there may be fewer taxes assessed upon death. And we are gonna get into irrevocable trust as well. Benefits of a trust. The benefits of a trust include passing assets outside of probate saving time and court fees, and reducing estate taxes. Trusts allow you to control your wealth. If you create a revocable trust, the trust assets remain accessible to you during your lifetime. You can designate how assets will pass to the beneficiary upon your death. Trusts allow you to protect your legacy, which includes protection from heirs, creditors. So here are the types of trusts. So there's a marital or a trust. This, this provides the benefits to a surviving spouse, part of the taxable estate of the surviving spouse. Bypass or B trust. This provides a credit shelter trust, which will bypass the surviving uh, spouse's estate to allow for the federal estate tax exemption for each spouse. Testamentary trust, this is outlined in the will and created through the will after death. Funds are subject to probate and transfer taxes. Irrevocable life insurance trust, this serves two functions. It excludes the life insurance proceeds from the deceased taxable estate. It also provides the liquidity to the estate and the trust, trust beneficiaries. Charitable lead trust. This allows certain, certain benefits to go to a charity and the remainder to beneficiaries. Charitable remainder trust. This allows you to receive an income for time period and and the remainder to a charity. Generation skipping trust. This allows you to use the generation skipping tax exemption. So trust assets can be distributed to grandchildren or later generations without incurring the generation skipping tax or estate taxes on the death of your children. Qualified Terminable Interest Property Trust, or Q-tip. This is used to provide income for the surviving spouse. When the spouse, when the spouse dies, named, um, named beneficiaries receive the assets. This trust is useful for second marriage context. Uh, this trust maximizes estate and generation skipping tax. Grantor Retained Annuity Trust, or GRAT. This trust is irrevocable. It is funded by gifts from its, from its grantor. 
It is used to shift future appreciation on quickly appreciating assets to the next generation during the grantor's life. And then let's look at revocable. This is a living trust. It can pass assets outside of probate, meaning that it doesn't have to go through probate. You can still retain control of the assets during your lifetime, you or the grantor. It is dissolvable at any time and may become irrevocable at the death of the grantor. You can name yourself trustee or co-trustee, retain ownership and control over the trust during your lifetime and make provisions for the successor trustee in the event of your death or incapacity. It can help you avoid probate. It is subject to estate taxes. It is treated like an asset during your lifetime. Irrevocable trust. An irrevocable trust transfers assets of the grantor's estate and out of the reach of estate taxes and probate. It cannot be altered by the grantor after it is, after it is executed. Once you establish the trust, you lose control over the assets. You cannot change the terms or decide to dissolve the trust. The irrevocable trust is preferred to the revocable trust when the aim is to reduce the amount of estate taxes by removing the trust asset, assets from your estate. Because assets, assets are transferred to the trust, you are relieved of tax liability on income that is generated by the trust assets. Knowledge check, SWAT for trusts and wills plan. So what are your trusts and wills planning strengths? What are your trusts and wills planning weaknesses? What are your trusts and wills planning opportunities? And then what are your trusts and wills planning threats? Most importantly, uh, that you definitely need a will so that, so that any of your heirs or beneficiaries uh, won't have trouble you know, getting at the assets. So that um, uh, if it if it goes through the probate process or something like that, they won't have any issues, right? But um, since we don't always think that we should have a trust or will, uh, I'm just going to encourage you to look this information up, research this information, uh, make sure you have a good understanding of it. So conclusions, beliefs about mistakes. So I don't have a full conclusion. I just I just thought that this right here, this quote from the film Unfaithful was very important. When I put this uh, presentation together, I thought about it. Uh, the movie had just come on HBO, so it was very fresh in my mind. Uh, but this is the, the conversation that Paul Vartan is having with Connie Sumner in Unfaithful. Uh, Richard Gere was her husband. And um, she was talking about mistakes or something like that. And Paul Vartan made a very interesting statement that I did not catch. All the times I have watched this film, I did not catch it until now. And it could be because it was for me to catch it now. There is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And it is as simple as that. It is black and white. It is not uh, issues of gray that there is the thing that you do and then there's a thing that you don't do. And so if Connie did not want to um, have an affair, then she didn't have to do it. There was nothing that forced her to have an affair. She forced herself. She, she sought it out. Uh, she visualized it. She sought it out. She made the call. She visited him multiple times and she had an affair, period. She had already had, had an affair in her heart uh, emotionally even before she got there. But it, there is no such thing as a mistake. There is what you do and what you don't do. And that's what I want to leave you with, that even if we're, we're not talking about affairs in this pre-singles counseling coaching uh, curriculum orientation, that uh, if you find yourself getting into the dating market and the sex market and then you get pregnant or something like that and you just you didn't intend for that 
you say that out loud. I didn't intend for that. I wasn't planning for that. Well, you actually were planning for that because if you didn't use any protection, right, uh, you were planning for it. But this is something, if you date with, with purpose, if you date with a goal uh, as a single individual, this will, will help you to hedge against that particular issue. If you don't want to have uh, sex that to lead with a baby, then you need to push for the partner to use contraception or you need to push for yourself to use contraception uh, or perform a number of, of strategies like the pullout game. I don't know. But um, this is you living a single life with purpose, with a plan, with a goal so that things like this just don't pop up. And, and you say, oh, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, I should have done better, okay. Because you, because you can't say that all the time. Once the child is here, that's, that's the rest of your life. Once you get with the wrong partner who might introduce you to drugs, that is an addiction that's gonna take some time to get over and resolve. Once you get involved with somebody that you find uh, uh, and you know fall in love and find out that he's married, that's hard to get out of. It, you can get out of it, but it's hard to get out of. So that's why it's important to uh, think about being single, understand, date with a person, establish objectives, because if you don't, you're going to find that what you do in your personal life is going to affect your, uh, your academic and professional lives, especially your professional. You don't want Paul Vartan to come visit you at your job because you waited too long to cut it off, right? So I'm going to leave you with this as you think about your singleness and whether you want to stand, uh, stay single, single to single, whether you want to begin dating single uh, to dating single, or whether you are interested in marriage, single dating or dating single to um, single, um, single leading to marriage, right? So that's something that I want you to think about. And I thank you very much for listening to this lecture. All right, so hopefully you were able to gain insight from this video discussion. Please like, subscribe, and visit. So uh, please like the video, hit hit the notification bell for more discussions. I am re-uploading all of my audios, uh, so I, I needed to make some changes to them. Uh, you can visit my, web, my website for more content at reginawifavors.com. If you want to send me an email, you can send an email reginawifavors at yahoo.com. Please also purchase the book. It's going to come out in spring 2021. So I had to make changes um, to my book to update it. And I also updated, updated the title. So the original title was Bait, Hook, and Switch, Confessions of a Rebound Girl. And I have updated the title to Toxic Encounters, Why People Pursue Rebound Relationships. So right now I'm still basically editing it and I want to make it available in spring 2021. So thank you very much for visiting my channel and I am Regina Y. Favors. Have a great day.